Hello and welcome to the Baxberg Wine Farm. For this episode, we've set up a head-to-head challenge. It's quite simple really, load very heavy things onto the back of a bucky. But we needed some assistance and Baxberg agreed to help us out. They've lent us these two massive water tanks. They've filled them half up, so there's about half a ton of water in each one. Lance here is going to help me load them up, and then we're going to spend the rest of the day doing our testing with the buckies properly loaded. All right, ready Lance? Let's do this. Okay. So we've had to put um, forklift extensions on the front here just so that we can get the water tanks right onto the bucky. Wow, look at that. Look how much the suspension's been compressed. That's half a ton. So both of these buckies can cope with about a ton. The Nissan a little bit over a ton and the Ford just under a ton. So we're kind of testing them to about half of what the manufacturers say that they can cope with. Okay, onto the Ford. It looks like the Ford's load bay is a lot longer than the Nissan's. We're getting this one on really, really easily. And there's still quite a bit of space at the front and quite a bit of space at the back. The Ford is a bit of a longer vehicle. That looks good. And we're closed there. That's good. Got a little bit of space. And we're closed there. Right, let's do this. Coming up in the next two episodes, we put the new Ranger and new Navara through a series of challenges. We test their on-road comfort, we take a look at their interiors and infotainment systems, and we take them off-road on this epic wine farm. The cars we have here are the latest addition to the Ranger range, the FX4. And it looks good, especially those Panther black wheels. It has the same engine but slots in just below the wild track in terms of price, coming in at 608900 And then we have the brand new Navara 4x4 LE Auto, which also looks really, really good. It's 20,000 Rand cheaper than the Ranger at 587900 So the thing about testing buckies for me is that I actually don't like them very much. So maybe I'm a good person to test them because whichever Bucky impresses me the most is the one that's going to win today. And um, before you all get annoyed with us because Cape Town is in a severe drought, the water that we're using is not drinkable water. It all came out the dam and it will all go back into the dam when we're done today. First test of the day, on-road comfort. So out on the farm here, we've got about a kilometer of tar road. It's not a great surface. It's probably a good test of this car's on-road comfort. So just uh, bear with me for a few minutes. I'm gonna do a couple of laps in each car and then I'll give you my rating. The Ford, carrying a heavy load, handled the imperfections in the road very well, offering a smooth ride. <sighs> Onto the exact same stretch of road to do a ride quality, ride comfort test in the Navara. So first impressions, first time I've driven the Nissan with this load on the back. And um, wow, it is noticeably more bumpy in here. And the interesting thing about the Navara is Nissan have really departed from tradition. They've moved away from the leaf spring suspension system, which Bucky's are so famous for, and they've gone for a multi-link coil system, which is very similar to that that you'd find in a more road biased SUV. And Nissan says this improves the ride quality and the ride comfort, but that's not what I'm experiencing here. <laughs> not at all, actually. This is quite a lot bumpier than the Ford. It feels a lot more wooden. Wow, okay, so this uh, experiment's been quite enlightening. For me, if I had to score them, I would say ride quality for the Ford for a Bucky 
8 out of 10. For the Nissan, probably have to give it a 6. While the Navara didn't ride as smoothly while loaded, ultimately these are leisure vehicles and will likely be driven with no load or with light loads on a day-to-day -day basis. In our wider experience, it's very hard to tell these two apart in terms of on-road comfort, with perhaps the Navara feeling a little more settled at the rear. Let's take a look at the interiors. The Ranger has a modern looking dashboard and offers ample interior space. The rear seats are particularly spacious and the standard leather really lifts the interior in terms of luxury. But I think the choice of materials lets the interior down a bit. I think it is getting quite hard for these Bucky manufacturers because they need to keep the Bucky's quite sort of workhorse-like, but they also need them to be quite luxurious. And the solution that they've gone with is plastic. So loads of plastic everywhere, hard plastic, hard plastic, hard plastic. And it is quite rough and, you know, it'll wear pretty well, but it doesn't look so great. Although I do think I prefer the interior in the Ford to the interior in the Nissan. The one thing I really like about the Ford is the Sync 3 system. Really comprehensive, really easy to use. And the thing I like most about it is that the buttons are all nice and big so they're really easy to stab at when you're on the move and that's complemented by two digital screens in front of me and that has loads of information as well. The Nissan's interior is equally high grade. It also has a stitched leather steering wheel and leather upholstery as standard. The rear seat space is a little tighter than in the Ranger. The plastics look and feel a bit more premium however but in some places they're a bit shiny. Hopping into the Nissan, and it does have a few niceties that the Ranger is missing. For instance, my seats are electric in here. And the seats are heated, which is literally my favorite thing in winter. But overall though, it just feels a bit more old fashioned compared to the Ford. The dials are very traditional, although it does have a nice center screen for all your information. But what's really letting Team Nissan down here is this touchscreen infotainment system. It looks like something from the late 90s. It's This is a brand new car. This just has to be a lot better than this. Little things that it does annoy me, like for instance, doesn't show you the station name like every single other system does. It just shows you a frequency. I don't know how to store a new frequency. I don't know how to change between them. Couldn't set this thing up. Try to get my phone to Bluetooth to it. That took a while. The navigation system is, well, I mean, here we go. It's loading. It's still loading. I'm still waiting. There we go. This, ah, oh, Nissan, this is just, this has got to be better than this. Join us next week for part two of Ranger vs. Navara, where Dave and I take our half tons of water up into the mountains behind the wine farm to test their off-road capabilities. And of course, we'll choose a winner. And we'll give Baxberg their water back. Let us know what you think in the comments below. We'd love for you to join our community by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.